Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today I am playing Power and Revolution Geopolitical Simulation 4. Uh, it's kind of similar to Superpower in that it's a modern day political simulation game uh, that puts you in control of any of 175 different countries. Uh, but that's not really what I'm going to be talking about here today. What I'm actually going to be talking about is a book that I just finished reading called Command and Control, uh, which is absolutely phenomenal. Um, I know that I've kind of been doing a little bit more of these lately where I kind of talk about books or things that I'm reading. Um, and um, I hope you guys still enjoy it. I have the game in the background, but... I just wanted to talk about this book because it was really impressive. First of all, I uh, apologize to everybody out there. I do have, um, I don't know if it's not really cold, but my throat's kind of sore and it's causing me to sound stuffed up and uh, like I have a cold. Uh, so I apologize about that. Hopefully it's not too annoying. I've been hoping to do a live stream and a couple of other videos as well over the last week or so, but this thing just keeps nagging and nagging and won't go away. Um, and eventually I said, you know what, screw it, I'm just going to record something even if it sounds terrible. Um, but anyway, back to what I was talking about. So, in 2013, uh, Command and Control uh, came out. It's uh, actually the full title is called Command and Control, Nuclear Weapons, The Damascus Accident, and the Illusion of Safety. It's written by Eric Schlosser, and it actually was the runner-up to the Pulitzer Prize in history uh, was it 2013 or 2014? I can't remember what the, the cutoff was for the year that it was in, but it was the runner-up for the Pulitzer Prize. And it is evident when you read it that this book uh, deserves that acclaim. It's an interesting book. It, it talks about a story that I had not known about, uh, about a Titan II missile explosion, and uh, not a spoiler here or anything like that. If you search the Damascus incident in the title, uh, you immediately know what happened. Um, but it tells the story of a Titan II that exploded in Arkansas, Damascus, Arkansas, in 1980. But it's more than just that. It really is a history of the entire United States nuclear forces, uh, as well as their security procedures around it, so that gives you a hint in the title with the illusion of safety, uh, but also U.S. nuclear strategy and kind of the rationale behind, you know, okay, what were the safety procedures in place, and why did they exist this way? And how did the U.S. envision using nuclear weapons in a hypothetical nuclear conflict? It is. It starts off uh, almost like a nonfiction book. Slosher is more of a journalist than he is a historian, and it really shows in his writing because he writes this book in a way that, after the first chapter, which really gives you an intro into what's going on. Um, I remember I checked three or four different times because I was like, wait a minute, is this a nonfiction book? Is this is this like a narrative story where it's, you know, it's telling me a Jack Ryan type adventure? Because it feels like that. It's so well written and really immerses you into the book that it doesn't feel like a dry history book. But it jumps back and forth, and I think it does it really well. So it'll tell you, you know, it intros with this really powerful, you know, beginning to the book. And then it slides you back into, okay, let's take a look back now. Let's see what what did this all originate from? Where did, you know, where did U.S. nuclear strategy come? How did we get here? And it keeps jumping you back and forth. So it's kind of like a, a flashback type history book where it's, it'll tell you a chapter about what was going on in 1980 in this incident. But then it'll tell you about how that chapter relates to, you know, uh, relates to something that had happened previously. And it lays this foundation and this groundwork in an incredibly impressive and effective manner, I think. Um, so that it's it's just a very well done book. It tells the story about how a B-52 bomber uh, crashed over North Carolina and the hydrogen bomb in it was dropped and everything operated as if it was going to detonate. Um, you know, the impact uh, trigger went off, uh, the altimeter trigger went off, everything that should have happened for the weapon to detonate happened and the only reason it didn't detonate was because the weapon was not armed it was set in safe mode and you think yeah well of course you know that's what they're supposed to do the problem is it then relates to how maintenance on that bomb had revealed that weapons that had been left for an extended period of time even though they were safe had armed themselves so you could have realistically had a nuclear detonation in north carolina 
just days before, was I believe it was days after Kennedy's inauguration that would have spread fallout across Washington, D.C. and Baltimore and all these areas just after um, J- I think I said JFK, that's who it was, just after JFK had, you know, had started kind of inspiring the nation and kind of trying to bring about a sense of optimism, then you would have had the worst nuclear accident in history, uh, wiping out the small town in North Carolina and spreading deadly fallout, uh, all throughout. But it is not just the story of the accidents. So it tells numerous stories of numerous accidents. It's interesting how many nuclear weapons actually blew up during the Cold War. I had no idea about this. But there were, it seems like a dozen nuclear accidents where the weapon literally detonated. But in most of these cases, it was back during the early days of the weapons where the actual nuclear core, the plutonium core, was removable. So the, the, safe, the safety was basically you take the actual core out of the weapon... And then you're left with kind of the high explosive shell that would set the the weapon off if the core was inside. But the safety thing was you remove the core, and then there were incidences where fires and things like that would set off these cores. They'd blow up, and it's kind of like, holy crap, if we didn't have these removable cores, we would have had massive nuclear accidents. Now, it's a little bit... I think the book gets a little bit sensational at points where it's like, oh my goodness, if this one thing hadn't happened, it's like, well, the weapons, in the case of the weapons with removable cores, it's like, yeah, but that's why they were designed that way, because you could, because you, there was no risk of a nuclear weapon because they weren't stored with their nuclear cores. Um, but then, you know, weapons, as you kind of progress through through history, end up starting to have sealed cores where you couldn't do that anymore. Um, and then... Again, it kind of uh, it, it it tells the story of the United States' development of nuclear weapons all the way through uh, to the Cold War, uh, even, and even after the Cold War, and talks about how there were all these accidents that could have gone different ways, uh, and it certainly tells a very compelling and interesting story around the Damascus incident in 1980 uh, when a Titan II missile uh, was uh, was was destroyed. As well as numerous others. Um, I thought some of the most interesting chapters were where Slosher was kind of talking about the real struggle for command and control over those weapons. Because on the one side, this book is telling you the story of all these accidents and the development of the arsenal. But at the same time, it's telling you the strategy and kind of the thought process. So it talks about the, the creation of the PSYOP, the United States you know, integrated nuclear war plans and sort of Eisenhower's desire to kind of pull some power back from commanders and then, you know, commanders desire to have nuclear weapon, you know, authority, launch authority in, in frontline, you know, officers in, in, in Europe who have the authority to launch these weapons. And then it talks about how some of these weapons, you know, these air to air weapons or these depth charges were incredibly unsafe and incredibly unreliable. And, you know, we're apt to just blow, you know, the safeties wouldn't necessarily work or, um, the security on them was a joke. So there was a fleet of F 89 fighters in um in turkey that had like a single man guarding all these nuclear weapons on a turkish air force base as part of you know nato nuclear sharing so it kind of talks about how the u.s really had this really loose control around their weapons and it was really easy to to use you know to to get them used by accident and then it talks about how the war plans kind of shaped who had authority to do what and kind of how the president in an actual conflict would have been removed from any real ability to do anything with the weapons and it kind of talks about how that sort of shifted and you know more and more control was put in the hands of, of the president where you know some of that authority was removed from the frontline officers so it's just it tells a really fascinating story uh from really the beginning of u.s nuclear weapons all the way to the present day and it, it sets it, it tells all of that history and all of that um that story with the backdrop of this this accident in arkansas as sort of the the framing piece that's that's enabling that discussion, and it does a very very good job. It's extremely well written, like I sl- like I said. Schlosser writes it more like a drama than he writes it like a history. I think at points the the depth of analysis may suffer from that, uh, but as far as a read, it's really easy to read, and I highly recommend it. And actually, uh, when I was uh, 
playing this game here and I was getting ready to talk about this, uh, I just found out also that this has been turned into a documentary, so a film documentary. It just uh, was at the Tribeca Film Festival in June, so it's called Command and Control as well, so I would expect that to come out before too long. Um, so that's kind of neat as well, uh, the fact that this is being turned into a documentary. It's kind of cool. Actually, I also think... Um, I could be wrong, but I know my dad at one point was telling me about a B-52 crash that he had to, you know, provide security for, and the timing of it and the location of it match one of the, um, one of the incidences that, uh, Schlosser talks about where a B-52 basically, uh, incinerated or came apart in mid, mid-flight with a weapon, um, it wasn't one of the more risky ones. It wasn't one of the ones that was like, holy crap, that could have blown. But it was still another one of those cases where a B-52 fell apart with weapons inside. And He never told me that there were nuclear weapons involved, but I wonder if he even knew. Um, but, but anyway, I mean, it's interesting that it certainly sounds like, anyway, that, that one of those my dad may have been involved in. Which is kind of cool. Um, not, not cool if anything had happened, but cool as long as it didn't. Um... So yeah, again, not too much of a review. My main criticism is that it seems like at times the depth of analysis suffers from the narrative style um, or the sort of dramatic style. Uh, I also think that um, at times it's a little bit jar- it's a little bit jarring the way certain chapters certain chapters flow really well, where what they're talking about in the present 1980 of the book um, segues perfectly into the. Uh, the historical topic, but at times it also feels like you kind of get lost in there. Um, but, you know, despite those minor quibbles, uh, very well-written book, highly recommended. Either check out the documentary, which I haven't seen, and I don't think it's publicly available yet, but either check out the documentary when that comes out or read the book. I will throw a link in uh, the description for the book. It will be, it's an affiliate link. If you click on it and you buy it, I get a little bit of money, but... Um, I'm just doing that because if I'm going to throw a link in there, it might as well be an affiliate link. So sue me. No one's telling me to review it or, or do this or that. Um, I think it's a really interesting book. Um, I think if you're interested in nuclear weapons and you're interested in the history of nuclear strategy, I highly recommend it. The one thing that really stood out to me was how much this book went back and talked about in detail the development of the nuclear, you know, nuclear force structure and strategy around it. I feel like a lot of these kind of books where they really just talk about the the history of a specific event get lost in the event and they only barely frame up the strategy in the background. I think if anything, this book goes a little bit too heavy on the background um, at the expense to some extent, not really of the story, but maybe of the flow. Um, But again, all really minor quibbles, really good book, highly recommend it. Uh, Command and Control, it's by Eric Schlosser, and um, yeah, that's that's about all I got there. Um, podcast work still progressing, uh, I'm hoping to have a logo finalized this week, or at least have an idea of what that'll look like, and then have the first episode up. Uh, I'll provide some more information before that comes up. I may throw video game footage behind it when I post it to my channel, but it'll be available everywhere. iTunes, obviously there wouldn't be any video game footage there. Uh, Strategy War Gamer, I'm sure I'll post it on his site. We're looking at getting a site put together as well. Um, but yeah. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this. This was a little bit shorter than I usually do. I hope you enjoyed watching me as North Korea nuke South Korea multiple times and nuke Seoul. Um, not entirely healthy to my reign and my rule as the leader of, uh, as the leader of North Korea, as uh, we'll soon see, but, uh, it was an interesting little playthrough. I may do a, a couple of videos on the game. Maybe I'll do a playthrough of something or maybe not. I'm not sure. But, um, uh, I will say this game doesn't have as good of a command and control for your nuclear forces as something like superpower where I actually go into a strategic map. Um, you know, you shouldn't have to find the one unit on the map. I should just be able to launch ICBMs by going into a, into a general map. But anyway, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts in the uh, comments and descriptions. And until uh, next time, uh, thank you for watching, and I'm out.